All right, how you doing? So we're getting ready to go uh, off the grid here, and uh, we're gonna go and do a little bit of work on our Iron Edison battery bank. This job's about three hours away from my house, so I'm gonna pull up tonight, do a little recon, do a little bit of work, and then button everything up tomorrow and get that optics RE running. This is kind of some of the roads that I gotta travel here quite frequently. Seems like a lot of the off-grid people, as my buddy Engineer 775 out there will point out, you know, they're, they're a little ways off the beaten path. You know, this one isn't crossing oak creeks or doing nothing like that, but you know, the, the drive is well worth where we're going to go. So let's uh, turn on a little music and then uh, see what we go here. How's it going? So I'm back at the Berglund project and uh, wanted to give you guys a little update. Um, I've had a kind of a tough time getting the remote monitoring working. Uh, this is the mate controller right here and this is what basically controls all of the Outback hardware. 
we got four Outback 3648, 3600 watt, 48 volt inverters. And uh, these are what power the house and charge the batteries. We really needed more inverter for the last battery bank that we had. Um, so we got a little extra here and it's definitely not a bad thing to have. Um, over here, you can see we got the new FlexNet all installed for the battery status. Uh, it's basically a state of charge meter that tells how full the system is, or at least is how full the batteries are, and what the state of charge is. Um, then right here we have two charge controllers. These are the Outback MX60 charge controller that regulate the solar charging the batteries. The batteries we're running on this system, a little more information about them, these are the Iron Edison. These are the nickel iron, 800 amp hour batteries. Um, still really kind of getting used to them and figuring out their parameters, doing some tweaks. Uh, that's going to be kind of what we're going to look at next. The, the Mate by Outback has the new Optics RE and what it allows us to do is inject this into the cloud and really statistically watch the system and see how it's performing, the graphing as far as the solar production, the loads. Um, and so it's become a really handy tool and also the ability to monitor it from another location. As an installer, the system is about three and a half hours away from me. So it gives me the ability to really watch the system, uh, do updates, to, uh, reprogram any kind of tweaks we might need to do, which aren't very common, but the ability of it is kind of nice. So, so what I want up having to do is the, the mate has to send a Cat5 signal and attach to the, the network and on this specific one it was a little bit of a challenge i actually had to buy a wireless adapter and what i went with was this amped high power wireless in range extender and uh, i ordered this off of amazon and this thing was great um, it was pretty easy to set up it has a poe a power over ethernet injector which increases the signal strength and it also has an auxiliary antenna that you can hook up if you need to do even more. Um, I'm about 200 feet away from the house, which is really kind of pushing the limits of it. Uh, note that it says up to 1.5 miles. To do that, um, it requires two of these to, to, to point to point connect them. Um, I'm going to do that in my house, and i got a video coming up on that. But for this project, it worked great, and uh, it's getting us good signal into the house. We also have networking or internet out in the garage now, which is super nice. So let me show you what I did to put that up. So our, our path to get this working right now is I have the mate, which is um, running a Cat5 behind the wall up through the attic, all back behind the batteries. We ran some Cat5, dropped down, ran it along this beam, over to here, and ran it up on top. Now what we got going on here is this is the power over ethernet injector and so the cat 5 is coming into here and then switching over and going into the out to the antenna which also has the cat 5 that's going back over on the other side of the garage door so I have a little better line of sight to the house. Um, the, this, this extender does require a 120 volt power source to power the uh, power over ethernet injector which I think switches it over to 12 volts, which, you know, it's cool too. I could take this and wireless to a little 12 volt battery bank and also kind of do a remote PoE injector of that way too. So let me step down here. So that cable, that Cat5 is running over inside the building and it just pops out right here. So it turned out pretty clean all in all. Now what this is allowing us to do is just basically extend the, uh, the wireless transmission to the house over there. And it's going to let us uh, watch the mate uh, at a local IP address on the uh, iPad, on his iPhone, on his computer. It's going to push that data over to Optics RE so I can remote monitor it. So there's really some, some great benefits to, to what we can do now with these new systems. I'm going to show you a couple other things that we got on this project too. One second. All right, we're using a, a Cummins 20kW propane generator. 
Um, I'm doing some service on the battery right now since this is still a new bank. I got some stuff going on. Um, this is where the batteries used to be. Before we put these in, um, somebody else had installed all this and the batteries were a good 20 feet away from the inverters which is you know typically not something that we do. So that they were installed about six years ago. He got some good lifespan out of them and uh, now we're stepping up to these iron edisons. But um, this is the generator that we're running on this off-grid property. This is a great generator. Uh, you can hear it running, it's quiet. Um, it has adequate power to charge a big battery bank and still run the property at the same time. And this is the solar array. So the, shop, the solar panels that are on the big shop are the existing panels that the other company installed before me. Um, there's around 5 kW of PV that's powering the residence. Uh, one of the projects I got coming back is I'm going to fill up a, a good portion of that roof and double the system size so we have more power for next summer. Uh, we're going to be putting some mini splits on this place trying to cool it a little bit better. And uh, we want to also take the well pumps which are Grundfos SQ Flexes. We got two of them on here and uh, they're both, or no I'm sorry, one's a SQF uh, 6-2 and one's an 11-2. So this array that we see on this small building that array originally was put in to run a Lorentz uh, solar well pump and uh, the pump was a little oversized for the hole so that got pulled out and then the Grundfos 11 was put in there and so right now we're only using about half that array to run the pump. Um, I'm going to wind up taking the other half of that array and redirecting it in also to, to run the solar um, to charge the batteries and I'm thinking about switching the pump over to make it an uh, AC only pump um, that way I can extend the pumping time to try to keep the ponds full. Let's go take a look at that pump real quick. Alright, here we are. Um, this pump right here, this is the SQF-11. Um, this pump right here is just feeding all the way back from uh, our building that's back up there. Off the, uh, we're running, I think, I think I'm running right now 8175s on this pump. Which is a, a good amount, it's running on the upper 100%. Uh, this thing's putting out a solid 11 gallons a minute and uh, they got it piped right now with some poly pipe running down a hill and it's going down to a nice pond that they got some bass in and uh, trying to keep that thing at least just so the fish can stay alive through the summertime. Uh, it's in a ravine, gets some nice water and uh, stays full pretty much off of just the, the seasonal rain that we get here. Um, so again, this is a Grundfoss pump and these things are amazing. Um, I've got a lot of these out there. This is what I have on my house. Uh, I'm running the six gallon a minute pump and, and it just does a phenomenal job and, and really draws very little power. So you can see we got a little we've got a little mice action living underneath this big fake rock too. So we're gonna have to do a little something with that next. So hold on one second, we'll go look at one other thing. All right, I was gonna take you down and show you the other well. Uh, it's got tons of star thistle down there and uh, I didn't really feel like walking through all that right now. But hey, I hope you like this little system overview that we got going. Uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks to do a little bit more work on the batteries and then uh, start planning on the solar install that we're getting ready to do. And then we also have a thousand watt whisper watt wind turbine we're going to be putting up. So, hey, thanks again for watching this video. Hope you like it. And if you got any questions, ask away. Thanks.